This is Twit. It's time to, to rove on over to the set. We're going to talk with Erica Peterson, who's the founder of Moms Can Code. How's it going, Erica? Good. How Hello. Are you? Good. Hi we'll, again. We'll do our, our transition <laughs> over to here. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's, it's like this is your table. Yeah. And we're just guests. I've, I've been waiting. <laughs> I, I want to know first, uh, you know, how many kids do you have? Two. So two kids. Feels How old? like 20. Feel, I have two. Two Kids are like exponential. Yes. One kid is like, feels like a lot. And mm -hmm. then when you get two, it's like a little bit less, yeah. but still a lot yeah. more. Yeah. So I have two. I have a five-year-old and a 22-month-old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hands full. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so let's talk about Moms Can Code. Uh, this is a community that supports moms interested in learning how to code both online and offline. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, why, why did you start this? Well, I was interested in learning how to code, and I went online, and there's a lot of information out there. Um, a lot of it's geared towards women who want to return to the workforce. Um, not a lot of it was geared towards just wanting to learn and where to start, where do I find that information. And I figured there's a support group for everything mom-related, mm -hmm. but there wasn't mm -hmm. any thing um, you know out there for moms who are interested in learning how to code mm -hmm. um, so I just started using the hashtag moms can code and um, people started responding and where, where were you using this hashtag to on Twitter on, on Instagram Twitter. Facebook. And people just caught I mean that's the beauty of the yeah, hashtag yeah, right it's yeah it's kind of like a so I um, I created on you know using canva this uh, image saying moms can code and I posted it in a local moms group and it had over 100 likes and the comments kept flowing and then mm -hmm. I posted it somewhere else and um, same thing happened and um, there's, uh, you know, that was June 16th and August 3rd we launched and wow. now we're here today. Yeah. So what's the, uh, what were you doing before this? I mean, so you, yeah. do you take some time <laughs> off when you had your kids? I mean, what kind of gave you this idea? So I've had a lot of, I've uh, done a lot of things, um, but um, I, I've been at home in spurts, right? Um, and I think that's a lot of um, women's stories after you have kids. Um, the cost of childcare, schedules, mm -hmm. or, you know, there, there's everyone has a different path. And um, mine was, I was at home, and then um, I had um, gone to school for cytotechnology, mm -hmm. and then um, decided to stay at home again, started Science Todge, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. And then um, I found myself wanting to learn a new skill and not didn't know even where to start. So mm -hmm. I found that other women were feeling the same way because there's a lot out there right now about everyone should learn how to code and sure. they didn't know where to start either. So yeah. it was, it, it's was it been really cool. Yeah, so I mean, explain a little bit about that. I mean, the, the reception of this because it's been such a, a short amount of time. Yes. <laughs> Would you say that this was a, this was a business that formed out of out of like an, an idea, like like when you talk about the hashtag and that becoming something else, yeah, it's almost like the business was built out of the idea yeah, of the hashtag. Absolutely. How, I mean, how how did you develop that out and how have people? It's a great hashtag, to that? by the way. Thank you. Yeah, Thank absolutely you. Absolutely is. So um, it's my busy season for science tots. We do mm -hmm. non science festivals and I bring STEAM activities. Um, and we, you know, this is my busy season, so I had no intentions of starting a full fledged <laughs> business um, in the summertime. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just quickly realized that um, there was an interest and I wanted to um, you know, help other women who, so what initially happened is I started getting emails saying, um, You've, you know, I, I really resonate with this. I'm feeling this way. This is my situation. Do you think you can help me? Mm -hmm. And those emails started coming in and then other women were sharing their story about how they started a tech company or, you know, why they started to learn how to code or what they were looking for. And it really touched me and I felt, okay, I have the ability to do something. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And that's how this was all. It all just happened very quickly. I so, just, yeah. In between the nap time, yeah, and the feeding time, yeah. and the. I mean, this is the thing when you're, you yeah. know, parents, yeah, especially new parents. It's like you have these little kind of yeah. pieces of time in your day where you're not doing anything, but yeah. your kid is there, kind of in the other room, either sleeping or you know just quiet. And you're like, okay, I'll just enjoy yeah. this for a minute. And then that's when something bad's happening, right? That's, <laughs> when it's that's completely when, quiet. When, yeah. It depends. When they're little, when they're super little, not really. But when they're older yeah. and they're quiet, yeah. it's like, uh, okay, now yeah. this, is, this has been quiet yeah. for too long. <laughs> um, so what kind of, um, you know, once you have this up and running now, like what kind of resources do you have for people? Like how do I get started if I want to do this so, if I was a mom? First and foremost, the hashtag. Yeah. So yeah. first and foremost, the hashtag. So just having, you know, um, sharing what's happening to you that day and having people respond. I think that, you know, 
the, the camaraderie that you know we already see women exhibiting and um, the support that we share towards one another, even even just through Twitter, is so magnificent. If you follow the hashtag, you can see women saying, wow, that's great, or I checked out your portfolio and you're doing a great job, keep up the great work. Um, or women sharing their stories about how, you know, it's nap time, ready to code, and or um, I'm not understanding this and, and I just, you know, need some support and someone will say, well, I can help you. Mm -hmm. So I think first and foremost, just, you know, using social media to connect has been amazing. Um, the next way that we support them is through membership. So we offer online and online resources that are created by the moms and our guests. So um, that's been really fascinating because they're creating content for one another. So there's no BS. Can I say that? <laughs> you can say anything. <laughs> there's no BS. As long as the chat room it's, approves, you can say yeah, anything here. <laughs> they're, they're coming from, you know, the, the career insights, the, what's worked for me and what might work for you is coming from another mom. So there's no BS. Um, and then the other cool thing that we do are um, in-person meetups and online we also do face-to-face -face video chats. So we check in with one another um, with kids running around in the background, mm -hmm. you know, who cares? So um, it's always like that BBC spot? Yeah, <laughs> right. The kid ran, and you're like, we've we yeah, dealt with that plenty like of that. times. Yeah, and we, and we don't care. Um, you know, we're just checking in with one another. And then recently, just the last two weekends, we've done um, two tech, like very intro tech skills workshops in Pittsburgh, and they've been a great success. We've had um, moms come, women who were interested in learning how to code, and we've also even had men come to so who are men in tech to support and BTAs of the classes. So it's been really awesome to see not just moms rally around each other, mm -hmm. but a whole community of people who support this movement and women in tech. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and now obviously with everybody contributing content, contributing um, these services mm -hmm. and support, so there's the community aspect, the yeah. community sharing aspect, but I also noticed that there's a commission based yes. aspect to this yes. as well. Explain so that. there's a small monthly membership fee, $5 a month, so Starbucks coffee. Mm -hmm. And when um, someone creates content for the platform, they're eligible to become an affiliate. So anyone that they refer to that becomes a member, they will receive a commission of from oh, okay. that uh, monthly f that fee every single month. Hmm. That's really nice. Yeah. So where does this all go? I mean, what are what are people going to do with all this? You know, yeah. have you already seen some success stories or is it is the goal to code something yourself or to get a job or what's kind of the end game for this? So anything you want it to be. So I'm, I'm one of the uh, women tech makers, Udacity scholars. Um, for me, I'm not looking to pursue a coding job, but I'm interested in learning. So this year, my goal is to complete that program and it's an Android basics program. So already I'm learning how to make um, an app. Uh, so I'm proud to show that and say that I've completed this. I mean, how many of us, um, you know, set resolutions in January and actually follow through with something? I think that that's really what this is about, right? Making the commitment to learn something new and making steps and progress to learn. And if you finish it, fantastic. Okay. I am so proud of you. We do have women who have already, just since they've joined the group, um, what that's what it's helped them do is um, gain the courage mm -hmm. to apply for that job, and we've you know we're cheering them on. They're they're sharing their portfolios with us, or um, you know I just um, got this job and I created this website. What do you think? So already we're seeing those steps, and if that's where you want to take it, we're here to support you. If you're just wanting to learn, you have done a great thing by just you know even like you know at the beginning of the year you're saying you're going to go to the gym. Let we will we're going to applaud you when you take that coding class. Every little step of the way counts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't say that at the beginning of the year. I say that every day and it never Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the beginning of the year. So I like this. So really what you're doing is you're saying, you know, to these women who are having kids and you're, you know, it's like, it's not a waste of time, but you're saying like, hey, look, you're going to be home. You're going to have these little kind of maybe some in-between time where you might yeah, feel like time, you're yeah. falling back because you left yes. your job or you're kind of like at a time where you just feel good knowing yeah. that you're still accomplishing yeah. something professionally while you're also raising these right. kids that at the time seem like a crazy deal, but eventually they all right. work out, right? Yeah. And <laughs> I, one, one mom um, shared something really special with us that she took up coding because um, she really enjoyed how, um, you know, it, it is trial and error and there, it requires a lot of persistence and it's much like parenting. 
So every little success made her feel better about her day. So it helped her see those small successes throughout the day when, you know, she was having trouble with her son. Like, you know, um, he was a fussy baby. Maybe, you know, he didn't, you know, nap or he didn't take a bottle or, you know, didn't latch on that day. You know, she didn't, she learned to see every little success with her son the way that she saw it with coding. Okay, you know, it, it's working. It's green. Great, you know. Yeah, uh, and it's probably got to feel good to kind of have, a, you know, a different dis uh, distraction, for lack yeah, of a better word. Yeah. A, something to kind of point your attention towards right. in a, you know, at a time or at a moment where, you know, life can, it can be really frustrating yeah, going through it can through be emotionally it's really frustrating. It's really nice to get distracted. Yeah, yeah, and now there's so many cool apps. You can do this mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be through a boot camp or a computer science degree. There are a lot of free resources out there. So we help um, by word of mouth and, you know, speaking to one another, share those resources. Yeah. Cool. All right. How can someone get involved? Go to momscancode.com. Um, we have all of the information up there. Um, as far, you know, we have our upcoming meetups on there. Uh, we have a who to email if you want to share your personal story or share a coworker's story, someone who's inspired you. Uh, we also have uh, the membership tab where you can click and go um, to become a member. And once we um, have your information, we'll invite you to our Facebook group and you know reach out to you. Nice. Yeah. Actually, yeah. One one question um, about the kids, like yeah. I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm sure kids of all ages uh, yeah. of, of moms who who are who are signing up for this are kids getting involved. Like, are kids interested in like they see yeah. mom. Learning yeah. how to how to code really yeah. cool stuff. How do they get involved? Yeah, I mean, so I, I know that? that from my own person. I I wanted to learn how to code because my son is interested in coding and he's yeah. five. I mean, he loves it. Um, we in Pittsburgh, there are a lot of events at tech companies, mm -hmm. and I have taken him with me. And he go, you know, he recognizes this is where the coders do their job, mm -hmm. and he understands that what he's playing on his phone is has been created by someone who works at this company. And for him to make that connection, that's really awesome. So yeah. I feel that if they see you learning something new, making an attempt to um, you know, gain a new skill, surely they're gonna become interested in it. And they're learning it in school now. Oh yeah, right. It's, it's happening. Right, and they're very exposed to yes. to this on a regular basis. You know, more and more kids, mm -hmm. younger and younger, have have uh, are being exposed to screens, yeah. being exposed to apps and yeah. how they work and everything. Yeah. Once you put the, once you connect the thing that they enjoy doing on a yes. screen with the fact that it's possible to also make those things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a really powerful yeah. and that connection. mommy can make that. Yeah, right. How cool is that? Yeah, it's yeah. super cool. Yeah, nice. Well, um, awesome work that you're doing. Erica Thank Peterson, uh, founder of Moms Can Code. And then also, what was, what was the other site that you mentioned? Science Tots. Mm -hmm. uh, tell, uh, real quick before we go. What, yeah, so tell Science Tots is Tots. a 501c3 nonprofit, and we go to non science festivals and set up these big, huge tents and um, have science activities for the families to do together. So we focus on ages three to nine. Nice. And um, the most recent event that we had was um, in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. And we were sponsored by the neighborhood Ford store. So that was, you know, a really awesome experience for us. We had a 40 by 20 foot tent. Mm -hmm. We had um, awesome games where the um, children could code or, um, you know, look at body systems. And um, they were um, playing with robots and doing all sorts of fun stuff. So it's exciting to offer that for free at a venue where you don't expect to do a STEAM activity. Mm -hmm. So it's also cool to... Um, Break down those barriers, maybe, or misconceptions that you know you developed when you were in high school. Maybe you didn't like math or science, and um, you try this new thing out, and, and it's it's refreshing and it's new. And you know, when your child goes to school, you know whatever feelings you have about it. Yeah, we've I, broken yeah. that down. Yeah, I was a nerd, so I like math and science, and yeah. I didn't like the sports. So, <laughs> <laughs> no more that left me. But yeah, although although I see what what kids have access to now, as, you know, as far as experiences like that. Yeah. And it makes me wish I had that when I was right. a kid. You yeah. know, like I was able to go to the computer camp. I went to a computer camp when yeah. I was a kid. That was about as connected oh, to yeah. that as I was I was able yeah. to do before getting my own computer. There wasn't a whole lot of awareness around. Yeah. You know, like kids, just, yeah. you just didn't think I'm a kid. I should learn how to program. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I don't, and I don't, you know, it's just a fun thing for them to yeah. do. I they don't know that they're they're being, you know, uh, revolutionary right now. They're mm -hmm. just having fun and being kids. And I think if we can approach it that way, 
cool. Yeah, we had like the computer like bus that would come to our school. You know, you get on for like an hour and then you yeah. you know, get you on, get you off, and that's it. It's like once a week and that, you know. That sounds right. awesome. Public school. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Erica, thank you so thank much you. for stopping by. And thank you. Thank you, guys. Luck. You can watch or listen to this discussion and more on the new Screensavers episode number 123 at twit.tv. And remember to subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.